welcome back to my space the channel watch natalie spelled n-a-t-a-l-e-e -E. i am here to do your daily reading i'm a psychic who gets channelings every single day and i put them over here in these daily readings and as i shuffle these cards infusing it with this very specific frequency i talk about the download and what they gave me is the energy that was like this overwhelming energy it's finally completed uh i felt it lived today it really lifted so i think it i think it's just a communal tension that sort of lifted or at least transformed into something else okay and we may get more on that however what they're giving me about what i just tuned into right now is First, they gave me Edward Scissorhands, which is a movie that I adore. I love to pieces, and I believe it's part of the national subconscious to love Edward Scissorhands. But that's just how I feel. I don't know how you feel about it. I'm not sure how you feel, my dear, but they gave me Edward Scissorhands. But kind of more specifically, Tim Burton. Okay, and then, yeah, it's, a, it's a, a, like a cloud of tension that just sort of, there's something about the dissolving of those edges that they're pointing out to me. Whoa, 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 Natalie, whoa. Okay. Sometimes they do sort of get into my, and I just sort of, it's weird. Okay, we have our first two energies. Holy moly, Masacholi. We have the Queen of Wands, the sexy one, with the Empress. This is pretty cool. This is way cool to have these ultra feminine energies coming through, fire sign energies with this queen of wands i mean just totally on fire i'm just getting on fire like actual flames oranges reds yellows a little blue at the bottom i'm really getting this sort of remember hades in hercules how he has like blue flame for hair it's sort of like that i'm just getting on fire you, your ideas, your creativity, your love. This is whatever you love, whatever you're passionate about. This could be you and your animals, you and your pets, your community, your children, your business, your work, your humanitarian efforts, your hobbies, sewing, knitting, crafting, scrapbooking. ant farms, I mean, anything that really brings you this sort of really pure, immense joy that you can sort of tend to and be really engaged with, this is, this is your energy coming so clear and so strong. Oh, look how beautiful it looks too. And here's the thing. Here's the thing is that the Queen of Wands is already sort of an extremely attracting, attractive queen, even though she's in the fire element and the masculine element of fire to go out and sort of laser point onto what you want and grab it and pull it back. She can actually do this beautifully artistic blend of both where she's so attractive and attracting. And I'm thinking of the fire sign pop stars that we have that were so that are so successful i believe britney spears is a sagittarius and if you remember her during the i'm getting like the baby one more time era where she just blew she just set the world on fire right like that song basically a lot that came after that too i don't remember every single song but it was just this fireball see a sort of like flaming fireball of energy so it's like all that energy she's a dancer so she's like 
dancing all dancing up a storm here. That's what I'm getting. Also, Madonna, a Leo, Jennifer Lopez, another Leo. So it's just this, it's fire energy feminized. So if you want to think of a fire sign female, you can think of those, you know, queens of of um, theatrical entertainment and you know attractiveness but at the same time very pointed energy very um, masculine energy but you can see that that's a great example of it being channeled in a fem that's what I'm getting for that's just what I'm getting from this I'm just getting this sort of flame <laughs> it's just a huge flame here and even with the Empress, I'm just, it's like a bit, she, it's like this Empress is just adding to the flame, like just feeding the flame. And she's just like, yes, 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 more. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. This Empress, em, this Empress is super indulgent because the Empress could also be excess. It could be drinking too much smoking too much enjoying things too. it's like that where you're enjoying yourself and yet you go over the board over the line and you're having too good of a time we've all been there oh my god and it's it's just it's, it's that's why i'm getting so much of the fire and the fireball it's like a huge okay and i'm getting fireball i'm not really getting i'm just getting a huge fireball adding to it there's this adding to it here something's multiplied something's either multiplied been added to maybe even been revised or refined but something there's something and then there's this additional to it man i just couldn't i had to stay I, seven minutes i know i had there was so much with that energy though i just couldn't let it i had to let everything come out about it the fireball Oh, I'm going to show you how this flipped out. It flipped out in reverse. Look at that. Five of Pentacles. And I heard it and I looked and I saw it. It flipped out t perfectly reverse. Trust me. Okay, I'm your psychic tarot reader, your favorite Capricorn on YouTube. Trust me. Okay, so we do have the Five of Pentacles. I'm just so excited because I despise that card. I just despise that energy. I'm a Capricorn, so we don't want anything to do with poverty. Not financial poverty, not emotional poverty, spiritual poverty, mental poverty. We just, we don't like poverty. It's like the bad word in the house of Capricorn households everywhere. Okay, I just came in from my walk, so I apologize if there's like these marks on my nose. I know it's not fun. Anyway, back to you. So yeah, this is like the fire consuming this dead air around it because the fire needs two things to stay alive and to grow. Fuel and oxygen, air. Fire needs air, it needs fuel, okay? So this is kind of like the fire just consuming Okay, so yeah, there is no poverty here, especially with this empress overindulging. This is totally, this is not that. This is, okay, so everything's confirming that, okay, hold on here. Let's just be careful of overindulgence and ego because when a card is in reverse, obviously the opposite is true and there are other things that add to this, um, add to what they're trying to say, to tell us. But they're telling me about putting the card upright because sometimes when it's an energy that we would want, like a benefic energy in reverse, then we have to exert extra energy to put that upright, to make the better you know, outcome more likely. So when there's, you know, a pers more per negative perceived card in reverse, they're telling me now it's sort of the reverse of that, where it's the reverse of what I just said, where it's what can we do to not make the card go upright? How do we keep it in reverse and not bring this to fruition? I feel like it's a warning here. And they're, give they're showing me the fireball, kind of like, 
So let's just guard against overspending. Don't overestimate your income, especially during a Mercury retrograde, which we're in the shadow of. And then let's just keep our egos in check and make sure that we're not... Look at her face. Just look at her face, you guys. Look at that face. <laughs> She's just got this bratty little face. She's probably like my brat. My brat queen. Yeah, she's totally my brat queen. But here's the thing is that people love brat queens. People really do. There's a lot of people that love spoiling this to get the reaction, to get that fire, to share that fire with them. So they... Anyway. Okay, let's move on. Let's get your next energy. Okay, so warning administered. What is... What is it? Oh, the moon upright. I'm okay to see this upright, actually, because I feel like this is extremely creative, okay? Extremely creative with the fireball, okay? They're showing me... So I did wilderness, primitive living, wilderness survival training, and it's, it's less about surviving in the wilderness so much as learning to live in the wilderness using primitive enough methods where you're not damaging the world around you. Anyway, so you will be using your intuition to guide you forward with this moon energy. Still very creative with this. It feels like this Queen of Wands is a base energy and then the empress is just like like add 20 points add 50 points it's like a one upper it's just like a button or it's some sort of amplifier to the 10th power so wands are inherently creative i mean why are they the wands the queen of wands you know this is not a wand but imagine if it was okay it's like a staff a stem a symbol of power it's this whole thing it's like a you know it is the pointer of energy. It's the, I have a better way to express myself in this and I don't know why my words are escaping me. Probably because of the shadow. I'll stop talking about it though for a little bit. Anyway. Anyway. That's the instrument. It's their instrument for manifestation. And it's only... And what I'm getting with this moon element here is like the magic and the belief and the energy work that you can do here. Because just like in Harry Potter, how you don't need a wand after a certain period, you can just do it telepathically. So is the same with this, where the magician with his baton, the world with her two batons, it's telepathic. And that's kind of what's indicated with this moon card is this subconscious, telepathic, artistic, feeling your way forward energy where it would be, it would make more sense if this were a creative venture because of this Queen of Wands. I'm just getting the fire so entertainment, you know, and with the moon, it's just vivid, something really vivid, you know, like if it were entertainment, it would be something like a pop ballad. It would be something juicy. It would be something that everyone all over the world can hum to sing along to, um, something truly universal. Some of the examples I gave are just these worldwide phenomena. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason why certain songs, certain artists affect the entire world because they're tuning into the common frequency that we all relate to, that we all share. It's not divisive or it's not niche or it's not, you know, extremely specific, custom tailored to your personal aesthetic prefer artistic preference. What I'm getting with this is that it's so big and powerful that it could sort of consume the world or it could consume the masses or it can consume... Like everything, I'm just getting, one cannot stand amidst a flame and not be consumed. Like you can't be around this because you're going to get sucked right into it. Does that make any sense? 
hope it, I hope whoever this is for that it's resonating. <laughs> I hope you get what I'm trying to say. Okay. Ooh, double the bottom. What's the next message, please? Yeah, you have everything you need. There's money. There's abundance. There's confidence. There's creativity. Damn. Staring right at me, right at the very top, Mr. Emperor himself. Right after the moon, too. Oh, I'm, oof, I'm so happy I noticed it. But we have counterparts with the emperor and now the empress. I mean, the empress and now the emperor. We have counterpart. <laughs> okay. Okay, so... It's a big deal. It's a really big deal, guys. But really, it is a big deal. There's only five cards here. Now we have the, the pretty powerful counterparts. Now, these counterparts are of dominion over an incredibly large empire. The kings and the queens have their own little kingdoms. The Hierophant and the High Priestess, it's a whole different definition of kingdoms and boundaries and lines and whatnot. But for the Emperor and for the Empress, they are already so successful. They are already so abundant. So... You are one or the other here, if this is resonating with you. You either have the immense res You're either like this pop star over here, okay? You're either this baby one more time energy, little firecracker, a little, you know, got a lot of moxie over here in this corner, or you are the... Oh, the backer. This is the machine, the power, the resources. This would be the talent for sure. This is the money, you know, there, it's there. It's, it's, there's no lack, it's totally there, especially with the Empress and of course the Emperor, but this is an additional message. So it's already implied. They're really making me stress this, hold on. They're showing me Edward Scissorhands again, and they're really having me stress to you that even though wealth and abundance is implied with the Queen of Wands, the Empress, and the Emperor, they're giving you this additional message to further assuage your fears. You have this fear. It's almost like it's never enough, like it'll never be enough, or it would never feel enough, like enough, to make you feel secure. So it's like um, an added, they're saying, they're telling me it's kind of like an attitude adjustment now to just accept and to trust and to not be foolish. That you don't have to be, mm, that you don't have to be sort of extra in order to feel secure. You can live within the means and do everything or do this project, this job, this artistic thing, whatever this is. Smartly. And that this will require you to feel your way through this and use your intuition and to not deceive yourself. But this is being added because it's both an assurance and like a warning to be practical. Okay, with this Five of Pentacles in reverse. Because I can see a very enthusiastic energy over here wanting to go balls to the walls and make it, you know, spend to the hilt. The Empress loves luxury. She loves refinement. She loves the best 
taste of life, okay? Whatever experience is, whatever food, liquid, whatever is going to give her the best life experience is what she's signing up for. She doesn't do half-cocked, half-assed, half-done, incomplete. You know, she just, she loves the flavor of life. Every single moment of her life has to be filled with pleasure or whimsy or f- flavor of freaking everything. Like she's just, that's her, okay? That's how she does life. That's, and with the Queen of Wands, I'm telling you, I'm just getting like excess. Not like Wolf of Wall Street excess where it's like toxic excess. <laughs> just excess of feel good it's like a but like a almost like a creative feel good this is almost like you have a $100 limit to go to Blick to buy paints to to paint a picture and the bill comes out to be like $800 and your budget was $100 it's something like that something this is that's the energy I'm getting with this so you're just gonna want a in some resource okay either creatively which would be a the best way to put this energy into because I do see a sort of you know these energies are kind of right next to each other so it's almost like just be mindful just be mindful okay back to the emperor over here so the counterpart has shown up has arrived and I do feel like this is the person that's going to be using their intuition as well moving forward I want to start clarifying because it's interesting that the Empress came out with a queen. The Emperor is all alone. All alone. Oh, you know what? Let's get one more energy. One more. They're pulling me back to this deck. Sorry. Okay, what's the outcome? What can we expect as the outcome? This interaction, this energy exchange, collaboration. Oh, dang. Okay, we have the Ace of Cups, the Seven of Swords, and the Two of Pentacles. Oh, man. You guys have heard me talk about the Seven of Swords before. This is a way that you're thinking. Oof. And the High Priestess at the very bottom of the deck. There's either a rebirth in an established relationship or there is the beginning of a really deep, new, wonderful relationship for someone. For you, rather. And... Wow. This is business. This is work. This is a working relationship because... The outcome is going to be, like I said, either a rebirth or a brand new relationship with someone. And in this relationship, what you will both be doing and undertaking in what you're trying to accomplish, it'll be carried out very smartly and strategically with the Seven of Swords. It's really crafty. It's really sort of, dare I say, ingenious. I dare say ingenious. That's what I'm, I'm just getting ingenious from this. It's because of the bottom of the deck, the High Priestess and the Moon. These are such powerful cards of intuition and feeling. Feeling, using that sense to feel your way forward and know when to step aside or back or forward or advance or, you know, it's really tuning that part of yourself so accurate and so sensitively that's why we have to allow ourselves to feel feelings and purge them out alchemize them into wisdom so that we can stay sensitive enough to pick up when life is trying to tell us where to go and what to do so you guys are both doing this right you're doing this thing this collaboration a lot of energy 
resources. I mean, it's it's very well backed. So I am definitely resonating with someone who has very solid resources themselves. If you're resonating with this energy, that's more creative, creative resources and likes to consume, sort of likes to play. And if you're resonating with this energy, you're more of the concrete, practical, powerful resources. Okay. You two collaborating on this, you will do it wisely with, with a very smart head for spending money because with the two of pentacles, it's balancing the books. It's making sure that there's enough for everything everywhere. And with the seven of swords, it's being super crafty with that. It's just, I mean, you could even, something about this collaboration could even discover some sort of I don't want to say legal loopholes, but some sort of some sort of agreement that would and where your collaboration would just or the thing that you're creating, something about this is just having a really crafty, smart in, inception. And with the High Priestess, I feel like you're very in tune with each other. Very in tune with each other. Yeah, one of you is the, the I don't want to say rabble rouser, but you're the rouser. You're, someone's the, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. And the other person is like, let's see if it makes sense. Let's look at the bottom line. And if so, then we'll put it together. We'll, you know, and we will make it happen. And the way they're going to make it happen is going to be really smart. Like this is why they're the emperor and the empress. Because they don't overestimate their income. Because they don't advance forward unless it's completely safe and secure. Unless everything's locked down. You're having the benefit of someone around you who is either extremely creative. Creative about creativity where they can make things work within limitations so if there are any creative limitations they can actually work with that and make a better thing because of it and if you yeah and then this person is going to be financially creative and creative with their resources like crafty like you're both coming up like this that's what you're that's the outcome actually so you're both going to be channeling that energy when you guys are doing this thing together and it'll be very like intuitive or it's almost like it's um there's like a cosmic consciousness about this it kind of reminds me of the temperance energy i'm feeling a little bit of temperance energy here with this um wow we haven't even clarified yet let's clarify the outcome how about that Okay, we'll do them all. Let's start with the Queen of Wands and the Empress. What do we need to know about the Queen of Wands and the Empress? You can always pause and come back to me. Okay, we have two cards face down. Did you see that? I bet you did. I Yeah, you did. You totally saw it. Okay, it is the Wheel of Fortune and it is the Six of Cups. Wow. I'm glad we did this because I was I was looking and they were telling me, oh, the emperor archetype looks at the empress more as a queen of wands, where it's not like they're. F I don't want I don't want to say that they're not a full empress. It's not that it's that they just see this person, this creative energy, as very go getter, youthful, um, sp sparky. I'm getting like lots of sparks and whippersnapper okay and with the wheel of fortune and the six of cups this is nostalgic even the wheel of fortune it's almost like i you remind me of me or you remind me of my daughter you remind me of my son you remind me of my nephew you remind me of my niece you remind me of my little sister my little brother you remind me of my dad my mom there's something you're my grandmother you remind someone 
with your spirit. Someone could be talking about you that way where it's like, oh, so-and-so, oh, they remind me of great, great, great whoever, something like that. But there is nostalgia here. Or even for their own younger days when the emperor was a young up-and-coming emperor and he was like, how am I going to do this, you know? They're showing me Gail Winand. Gail Winand of the Banner talking to Howard Rourke and kind of saying, you remind me of me. And Howard Rourke trying to tell him, what happened to the Gail Winand from Hell's Kitchen? What happened? I digress, darling. Let's continue. So yeah, the Wheel of Fortune is also telling this emperor that if you're in this energy that you're just like a lottery ticket. Oh, whole big download. Okay, here it is, you guys. They're saying that you, if you're resonating with the creative energy, that you are able to write your own lottery ticket for you and the emperor by what you create. That what you create becomes a lottery ticket that you kind of play and submit into like this cosmic pool of lottery winners. And because not everyone creates a lottery ticket, there's like four people playing and you're going to be one of the four. But no one knows that because no one tunes in like you're tuning in with this person. No one tunes into that frequency so they don't know better. They don't know that, that they need to control their energies and channel their own energies appropriately to get to a point where they're creating something here do you know what there could even here's this could be something where there's stable positions but it's on a budget this i feel like there's such a budget here it's like balancing the checkbooks okay there is abundance and there is security there is safety here there's a warning not to overspend but it feels like there's just like real craftiness here with that just being really clever, being very, very clever. And they're saying that, but what they're saying about the lottery ticket is that not everyone can do this. Not everyone knows how to do this. Not everyone knows how to do this. Not ever. no one even cares about doing this. No one even cares about tuning into a frequency emotionally or spiritually and like channeling the cosmic consciousness in their bodies to create a better life for themselves and to form, formulate their art of living based on... Okay, no, that's just you and me here on Watch Natalie. So to other people, whatever you're working on, and you you know, I'm just going to share this. Some of you share stuff with me. You guys, you guys are working on books. You're working on poetry, songs, music, screenplays. You guys are working on stuff. So I know this is really resonating for some of you out there, okay? So whatever it is that you are creating, you are literally writing your own lottery ticket. Writing your own ticket. Okay? And you have kind of like this advantage because you are channeling your own um, correct energies. Your own energies are, are less, are not like all messed up and corrupted. Because you're cleaning yourself, you're trying to, you know, purge out all of the negative energies. You know what I'm saying? So that's part of why this emperor sees you as the wheel of fortune because it's just like, I'm, I'm hearing one in a million. One in a million. Let's take a look at this. Five of pentacles in reverse. It's all the ace of wands. Oh, something. I have such a warning for you, you guys. I'm so sorry. You you, you are going to be so tempted to overspend. You're going to be so tempted to overspend. And I'm so sorry, you guys. Do not do it. Don't overspend. There will be enough for you, for everyone. For Everyone will have their needs met, okay? But you have to do this very... Like, this is the point. The whole point is to do it smartly. You're gonna want to. You're gonna want to overspend. That's what I'm getting from this. Is that you're gonna want to overspend? You're gonna spend more. But if you do, if you let that get the better of you, boom, it runs out. 
it runs out it's no more okay i'm just telling you i'm just telling you you can totally do this be super successful but just don't overspend let's take a look at the moon okay we have two cards Ooh, judgment and the page of swords Dang, that's big energy clarifying the moon with the judgment it's like oh my god so there will be here's the thing you're going to be receiving information from your subconscious from the ethers from your own spiritual psychic downloads you're, you could even be receiving information from people and technology and life and what have you whatever information that you are receiving into your subconscious into your awareness you're going to be called upon to make judgments on it's a test of the integrity what you do with that information and it apparently what the judgment calls that you do make this is part of you being on this path only lit by the moonlight and having to use that intuition to feel your way forward you're doing this in life right now you are feeling your way forward and because life is moving and there are sunrises and sunsets and body requiring you to eat and take care of it and there's people you have to interact with and because there's all these successive moments that happen one after another you're still required to maintain the same frequency as you feel your way forward through all of those different experiences with all of those different people with all of the different ups and downs of those energy changes from when you change from a very solitary quiet environment to a very social active ambitious environment or whatever it is for you you're feeling your way forward and this is like the make or break time for you is that you'll have to honor your integrity and your truth okay follow your intuition listen to your dreams could also be resurrection of some sort but i'm really not getting that i'm getting the other stuff let's take a look at the emperor The Emperor. What do we need to know about the Emperor, please? What do we need to... Oh, did you see that? Guys, there's a lot of um, major arcana coming out, okay? It slid out and then all these cards fell forward and then this one almost completely revealed itself. So I'm taking it. It's the Knight of Swords. It also really fits with this energy, with the Chariot energy. Looks like they're going to move fast. <sighs> Looks like they're going to move fast. That's interesting because we have a sword coming up with this emperor energy. And then with the empress, we have this queen of wands energy. Although I feel like it's the queen of wands energy that has the empress kind of boom, one upped. Okay. That adds as like a multiplier or a multi, you know? Well, yeah, with the chariot clarifying the emperor, they're extremely victorious. They're successful, they're ambitious, they're organized, they know their own mind. They're very, it's like what they think and feel and do, they're, it's all very seamless. I'm not getting a lot of inner conflict with this at all, which is really, really great. We have someone here with the also with this knight of swords it's like they're thinking very quickly they can think on their feet they can probably do complex math really easily in their minds they could do calculations formulas that kind of a thing but their mental faculties i mean it's like lightning speed like once the idea okay now let's take this apart kind of one by one let's start with this ace of cups This is the outcome now. Oh, interesting. 
Leo energy with the strength card. Oh, you'll have, they're telling me, you'll have to bring your pride to heal. Or it's like, this is what the outcome is, is that prides get put down. Swords get put down. It's, it's like humbling. I'm getting a very humbling experience here. Where you're humbled, they're humbled. There's like a humbling energy in the air. Eye contact. Lots of eye contact too. Beautiful start to a relationship. Or if this is a resurrection for you, a beautiful resurrection. This is a seven of swords. Oh, you guys. You guys. Now we're now we're getting somewhere because the seven of swords with the magician is downright manipulator. It's it's downright manipulation. And here's the thing: in the outcome, no one's manipulating. Like the empress and the emperor, there's no manipulation going on between these two. What this is, is manipulating the creation itself. It's like you're both entering this commitment or this partnership, very humbled, humbling. <sighs> Unstoppable is what they're saying. Unstoppable. Let's take a look at the Two of Pentacles and then we'll get advice. Do you see that? <laughs> Seven of Cups. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that was right. The Seven of Cups. With the Two of Pentacles, we have this sort of and I'm picking it up as the, the pocketbook, the accounting, the money, the bottom line. Be very, very thorough if you're having to do legal work and contract writing in Mercury retrograde. Because this could obscure, obfuscate details and things could sort of get away from you let's do one more oh i want to clarify the magician Because with the Seven of Cups giving you so many options, it's really important that these energies are manipulating the right things. Channeling this manipulative energy the best way. Which as a creator, when you're creating an artwork, when you are creating a business, when you are creating an entity, a policy, a handbook... You have lots of options and you control all these things. Let's clarify. Interesting. Hanged man to clarify the magician. Change in perspective. Interesting. You and this person are both coming to the table, coming to collaborate on something from different perspectives. And what you are showing each other is this empowerment, this magician energy, this empowering energy of how to do things the other way, how to do things this other way, the empress's way, the emperor's way. Oh, look at that. I never saw it from that perspective before. Now it's a tool that we can both use. Now that we can... It's interesting. It's almost like a trade. Like you're 
learning things from them. They're learning things from you. Let's take a look at the Seven of Cups. That was quick. What is it? <laughs> and now we have counterparts. The King and the Queen. Two counterparts. We have the King and Queen of Wands and the King and Queen. And we have the King and Queen of Wands and we have the Emperor and the Empress. You know what's hilarious, you guys? Here's what I feel. I feel like this person is... I feel like the probably the Queen of Wands with the Empress is going to want to spend more money. And I feel like the King of Wands Emperor is going to say, please no. Can we please not spend any more money? But they're going to... They're going to be the ones trying to balance this all out, but... I feel like they're going to be the ones sort of like less able to to see where the give is, where the room is. I feel like this one with the, the empress over here, she's going to want to spend more. Which is why both of you will need to be very humble coming to the table. And you will be. Making decisions, really smart decisions, manipulating everything to your advantage peaceably with full integrity and honesty, of course, but seeing it from another perspective and having the benefit of like everyone's perspective. These are really powerful energies. This is like Michael Corleone energy. Okay, just saying. Or like Don Vito. It's more like Don Vito because he was looking at the long-term potential unintended consequences of peddling those drugs. Sorry. Okay, let's take a look at the... Where? Oh, okay. Let's get some advice. Let's get some guidance. Let's do some more of this energy work here. What I'm getting, you guys, long story short, is that you and this person will be a great collaboration wonderful different resources valuable resources bringing bringing being brought to the table and the only warning coming out is to not overspend to stay humble open-minded actively try to look at everything from every perspective especially the other person's perspective if they're so willing to take the time to explain and to elucidate because it will help you in your strategy it will help you visualize and plot out how to achieve what you're trying to do that's hilarious has that been like that this entire time yes it has oh. okay and don't overspend, just don't overspend. Follow your intuition. I actually, let's pull Oracle, sorry, let's pull Oracle specifically for the moon, the judgment, and the page of swords. Do you guys remember these guys? Because this is what you're going to have to feel your way forward about anyway. So let's just see if there's any like special additional message. The moon, the judgment, and the page of swords, please. What guidance do we have? For whoever this is resonating. Um, okay, so we have these. Okay, I'm taking the ones that were at that fell out touching the cards. Nothing is yet set in stone, mutable moon energy. So things are still in flux right now, which is so moon energy for it to be in flux. And then a new start is coming, new moon energy. So this would definitely be nothing is yet set in stone. So there could actually be some talk, gossip. On the negative, it's gossip. On the positive, it's positive talk asking about you okay and then a new start is coming really feels like this judgment energy totally this is like the moment do or die you know okay now do we have overall energy
this is also a little bit of residual confusion or apprehensiveness before you two kind of get really together. The moon, it's a little, I'm not sure if they really, I'm not sure, you know, it, it's a little bit of hesitation, but then a decision is made. And it doesn't even need to be based on something you've heard or something they've heard. But a decision is made to approach, that. and I feel like it's about you two first getting together. I don't want to say get together like that, but you know. Okay, is there any general advice for this spread? Is there any general advice for this spread? Anything you need to know? Three, thank you. Your dreams need a practical plan. You know what this really reminds me of? Where was it? Hold on. It actually reminds me of this. Energy right here. This is almost like plotting it out, having the benefit of all the different perspectives. It's like Michael Corleone plotting and planning. And that extremely pivotal scene where he says, I'll shoot him, let me go get him. Where he really becomes and he you know, steps into his power. This is you guys putting this together. Putting together that practical plan and getting everyone's opinion, thoughts. And then the bottom of the deck, look at the bigger picture. Oh, this is so cool. Look at the bigger picture. Full moon and Sagittarius energy. There's that Sagittarius energy influence. Wow, you guys. Well, this is really cool. This says that this is going to happen. It's going to move forward. You and this person, you're either the Britney Spears or you are the backer, more resourceful. Okay. And you guys are going to be very smart and savvy. And the more open you are, just so that you guys know, the more open you are to each other and genuine in that, the more you are genuinely interested in hearing the other person's perspective. Look at it from Michael's perspective, trying to understand how everyone in the room feels and imagining what you can build off of that and what you can do with that. That's going to be your best bet because I'm picking up a really talented, beautiful energy with this Queen of Wands and the Empress. And so I don't, if you're resonating with that energy, I just want you to move forward in this with confidence so that you get your chance here with this Wheel of Fortune energy. Just be mindful of overspending. You're going to want to. You're going to want to. I'm just going to tell you that right now. You're going to want to overspend. You're going to want wardrobe, bigger jewels. I don't know. Whatever have you. You're going to want more. Okay. More fabric. If you're, you know, whatever it is. And if you are the emperor, I would just say to be, you're going to be fine. You're going to be firm. You're going to be realistic. At the end of the day, it needs to be practical. It needs to make practical sense. And I really think that will win out over the Seven of Cups influence. That will, t it's like you will consider it, consider the rationale behind it, but that ultimately I feel like you will make it all work and make it all fit. Okay, guys. So that's all looking at the bigger picture. And that's what I would like you to remain doing. That was your reading. That was an interesting, interesting reading, you guys. So let me know how this goes in the comments below. If these were Scooby Snacks, I'm glad you enjoyed them. I hope you guys all found this immensely useful. And I hope you guys have a great day. We will talk tomorrow. And don't forget, the 7th is the Full Moon in Leo live on YouTube. Bring your charts. Bye. You could have a lot of haters around you, Capricorn, who want to bring, who would love nothing more than to manipulate you to bring yourself down. Really is sort of ordained. Saint Capricorn is the motto. Motto. The motto. The order of the universe.
universe. That's what I'm talking about here. That's the authority. It's like the karmic courts balancing the results of free choice. It's like you recently overcome a major scare. It seems like it was just a scare because you came through. You pulled through. You worked really hard. You, you are very endearing to this person. Okay? They like you very much. They like you very much. It's almost like you're making things harder for yourself, Pisces. And it's like with this person, you now have the last tool 